can you tell a story about other forms of technologies that we could be working on now that, that the technologies the technologies that we have right now could help us build those technologies better and help those projects succeed now are you talking about like just in general in general or, I mean, yeah because you could start with like with the moon landing for yeah. example we, we, we you know went to the moon in you know, 60 what 60 something years ago and we haven't gone since uh, and there are many other examples of projects and, and technologies that we just abandoned from yeah. decades ago. Well, and a, and a lot of them, I wouldn't say we necessarily like full on abandon. It was a lot of stuff, like all of the really cool stuff in aerospace was first tried out in like the 50s and 60s. Uh -huh. Like that's when we were going faster than the speed of sound, going five and 10 times faster than the speed of sound. I mean, like the, the just like the time between the X1 and the X15 was not very much time. And you saw like, okay, we just broke the sound barrier to now we're going 10 times faster than the speed of sound. Uh, so supersonics, hypersonics, going into space, landing on other planets, um, all like space stations, all of those things were first really kind of figured out and pioneered in the 50s and 60s. But they, most of those didn't have really solid economic drivers mm -hmm. behind them. Yeah. It was all governments pushing for them for like defense or bragging rights or strategic situations, which made sense. But as we kind of moved past those to where they became more ubiquitous on the, the kind of government side, it's taken a while for like the um, needing to be able to launch massive amounts of satellites into orbit cheaply. Mm -hmm. We didn't we weren't doing enough stuff to really need that as a technology mm -hmm. until you started to have the internet telecommunications and all these other systems getting into place where it made sense of like oh we have now a huge need to have large numbers of satellites in orbit okay now let's figure out how to do that a lot cheaper than like the space shuttle or any of these other systems that were tens of millions if not billions of dollars per launch which is awesome if you're launching like a super spy satellite uh -huh. or gps satellites but if you're trying to do a low-cost communication network or geo observations or weather monitoring or all these other things on a commercial scale you got to get those costs down so that was kind of the driver behind like having massive amounts of companies working on space launch and stuff like that um you had governments were pushing for like the concord to exist yeah the economics on it were kind of questionable at the time, which is why it stopped flying. It also had crashes. <laughs> People didn't want to fly on it anymore. But now it's gotten to the point where our world is so much more interconnected that on an economic standpoint, and as technology has progressed, then now you have companies working on supersonic passenger travel again, yeah. like boom. You have companies working on hypersonic passenger travel like Venus and Hermes because there's an economic pull for it. Like people would want that. Like you're saying, oh, I could go from New York to London for the cost of a business class ticket in 90 minutes as opposed to six or seven hours. Yes, yeah. please. Thank you. Because hmm. um, it changes how the world can work and how we can do like business, relations, interactions, all of those different things. And it's really been now that we've kind of matured on the economic side that there's starting to be a pull for all these technologies to kind of be dusted off uh -huh. and try it out again with all the advancements we have in our modern capabilities, yeah. but to serve real economic demands that exist now that didn't really exist in the 50s and 60s.